So, uh, but after having spoken about this uh, Vishwaroop Upasana, what is Lord Krishna trying to do? He is going to talk about Prithik Twena. Who, is, who are Prithik Twins? We, 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 we learned a little bit about it, right, in previous shlokas. They are Prithik Twins, are the Upasakas, are ones who are worshipping Devi Devatas, the demigod worshippers. You know, Pratiko Upasana also we call him. So, let now he is moving on to Pratiko Upasana, the ones who are going to worship Devi Devatas. So, Till now, he was talking about Vishuru uh, Upasaka. So, he is talking about how, what all he is. After telling what all he is, he is moving on to Pratiko Upasana, which is worship of uh, Devi Devas. Revidya maam sumapa puta papa yagya rishtva swarga tim prarthayante te punya masadya surendra lokam ashnanti divyan divi deva bhogan so um, those uh, who study the uh, Vedas and drink the Som Jusa, seeking heavenly planets, worship me indirectly. Purified of sinful reactions, they take birth in, uh, on the pious heavenly planet of Indra, where they enjoy body. So this is what um, a Lord is telling in this uh, one. He spoke about universal form, right? And he spoke about Vishwarupa Upasana, where he is talking about. And uh, now he, what is he going to talk about? Worshippers of Devi Devatas those who are doing Pratiko Upasana. So what Lord is trying to tell? Tre Vidya. So Tre means three. So Lord is saying people who study the three Vedas. So what are they doing? Somapa. Somapa, they are drinking Soma juice. And Swagatim Prarthayante. Swargatim. Swagatim here. Swargatim Prarthayante. Means they are, what are they praying for? They are praying for something. Prarthana. What are they doing Prarthana for? Oh, please give me Swarga. Please give me Swarga passage for heaven. They are praying for that. Maam Yajna Ishtva. Maam Yajna Ishtva means what? They are worshipping me only. Maam. They are doing that Yajna Ishtva indirectly. By doing sacrifices, they are worshipping me only actually. Then he says Puta Papa. <laughs> Such people are getting Puta Papa. Their Papa are gone. Finishing. They are getting purified of all their Papas. De punya asadya surendra lokam. So once they, they attain what? Once they get rid of their papas, they are attaining the pious world. What are the pious world? Surendra lokam. Surendra is who? Indra. So he, they are going to the loka of Indra. Ashnanti divyan divideva bhogan. So what happens on that planet? They are enjoying. Ashnanti. What? Divideva bhogan. What are they doing? Bhoga. What kind of bhoga are they doing? Enjoying. What kind of enjoyment? Godly delight. Divideva bhoga. What kind of delight? Divideva. Godly delight. So this shloka is about people who are worshipping daily devatas. So they are into, you know, these kind of three Vedas. They are doing all those rituals and yajnas and they are trying to please all the demigods and trying to go to that celestial abodes, which is also temporary. <laughs> so... In uh, 9.12 also, Lord Krishna had described, right, the mentality of this, those non-believers and those demoniac kind of people, atheistic kind of people, right, and their views and what they are thinking, like, the shloka was like, um, 9.12, Moha sha moha karmana, moha jnana vicheta saha, rakshasi masurim chaiva, right, that, that was the one. They are bewildered completely. In their deluded state, they don't know what they're doing, right? Everything is defeated. They, they, are, they don't know what they're doing. So, Mogha Asha, Mogha Asha, Mogha Karmana, right? Mogha Jnana, everything is gone. They're deluded. So, in this verse and the next verse, what Lord Krishna is mentioning is, who are non-devotees, but not, they're not atheistic either. They're non-devotees, but they're not atheistic. It's not that they're not non-believers of God. They are doing. What are they doing? Yajnas, ritualistic stuff. The ceremonies, karma kanda, as we say in uh, you know Vedic rituals. So, what is that karma kanda Vedic rituals referred to over here? Vedya, because once you get the knowledge of Vedas, you try to do rituals. That is why it is re referred to as Vedya. So, what do Trivedis do? They actually take shelter under the lotus feet of Krishna only. They they engage in pure devotional service to satisfy the Lord. But what is happening? Unfortunately. Those who are simply, simply just over, upper, upper, se na, official, um, uh, officially they are studying Vedas. They are not into that depth. So they are more interested 
mm, what will happen now i know these vedas if i do this sacrifice i can please this god if i do this mantra okay indra will be pleased if i do this mantra chandra will be pleased i know all these mantras by heart and my pronunciation is pure my stuff all the material stuff is pure i will do this yagya and i will please those devatas they are fascinated they are fascinated by this tri vidya or vedas you know and they start worshiping they go in a wrong direction they start worshiping the devatas indra chandra and all that and uh, after doing these yagyas and all these rituals but in actuality what are they doing they are actually worshiping god krishna only indirectly why because you know they are not realizing who is sanctioning even indra chandra kubir agni devata everyone somebody is sanctioning the gifts that uh, we are asking for oh i want a huge palace i want uh, this multi millionaire that bank balance whatever they are asking who is sanctioning indirectly lord only is saying theek hai indra wo mang raha hai de do give it to him so these ritualistic ceremonies they are good it's not bad it's good deeds at least we are not atheistic but they are not counted as devotion that's that doesn't come under that heading of devotion so whoever is performing these rituals and all you know they are not getting released from this cycle of birth and death why because they are going to indra planet moon planet on all those planet once their merits are over they come back over <laughs> so that's they, that's uh, you know they can go to mahar loka jana loka tapa loka wherever but they may spend thousands and thousands and thousands of year enjoying drinking somarosa and everything but uh, ultimately they have to come back so coming back to this one lord krishna is pointing out what is the defect you can go to heavenly planet okay very good but what is the defect lord is going to talk about what happens to those people see if someone is doing some um, devata worship if he understands that devi devatas are different parts and parcels of krishna only and the worship is actually happening to krishna so that worship can be considered but then what is happening these pratiktvenas or these pratiko upasakas they are considering the demi gods or the devi devatas only to be the supreme yehi supreme and there is no other supreme being other than them and then they worship them that way that's improper that's improper that's what lord krishna is going to say so what will happen to such people who are getting into such kind of worship so lord is going to explain to us let's see what he says तेतम भुक्वा स्वर्ग लोक विशाल तीने पुण्य मत लोक विशंति एवं ते धर्म मनु प्रपन्ना गता गतम काम काम लभन्ते ओके सो आई विल कंटिन्यू व्हेन दे हैव दस एंजॉयड वास्ट हेवेनली सेंस प्लेजर एंड रिजल्ट्स ऑफ देयर पाइस एक्टिविटीज आर एग्जॉस्टेड दे रिटर्न टू दिस मॉर्टल प्लैनेट अगेन दस दोस हु सीक सेंस एंजॉयमेंट बाय एडेरिंग टू द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ द थ्री वेदास अचीव ओनली रिपीटेड बर्थ And the three Vedas, three Vidya. So we are discussing about this Pratikthvenas, right? Devi Devata worshippers. In the previous lokas, we we saw what is the result of demigod worship, how their desires are fulfilled. So Lord Krishna is talking the same thing again and again. And here he is talking about the result rather than what they do. There he said they three Vidya. After learning the Vidya, they are doing the worship. Here he is talking more about the results of doing that. So Lord Krishna says, "Tetam bhuktva um, swarga lokam vishalam." so what happens bhuktva means bhogna after enjoying what they enjoy swarga lokam heavenly planet swarga lokam vishalam which is very very big kshine punya once they are the kshina means reduce punya punya when it reduces the result of their pious activities reduces or gets exhausted then what happens martya lokam vishami then they come to martya lokam vishanti they come back to the martya loka means this mortal earth काम काम एवं त्रयी धर्म एवं त्रयी धर्म अनुप्रपन्ना मींस व्हाट एवर काम काम व्हाट एवर देयर काम मींस एन्जॉयमेंट सेंस एन्जॉयमेंट्स दे आर डिजायरिंग बाय फॉलोइंग व्हाट द थ्री वेदास एंड व्हाट एवर धर्मास दे आर डूइंग त्रयी धर्म त्रयी धर्म मींस द थ्री वेदास सो व्हाट डू दे अचीव आफ्टर दैट गता आगतम लभन्ते गता agatham labhant labhante means they it, they get what do they get gata and agata means repeated birth and death they come and they go they come and they go gata and agata so come and go where birth and death so 
So very nice shloka which talks about the temporary nature of this, uh, you know, results. This shloka 9.21 is about the results of the, the worship of uh, Devi Devtas. So it is, it is very temporary because, uh, you know, we are talking about uh, uh, the Vedic times, you know, not modic, mo this modern times. Modern, modern times, nothing is happening. We are just talking about the Vedic times. In Vedic times, what happens, the Devi Devtas uh, worshippers uh, would expect is, I am doing so-and-so ritual. Okay, So when I will quit my body, I should go to heavenly planet. And then I will enjoy over there for thousands of years. And what uh, may, um, this nowadays modern uh, Devi Devta worshippers are thinking, firstly, modern day, they are no Devi Devta's worshippers only. It's all, you know, what do you call that um, mixture, concoction. But still, if we say, okay, chalo, theek hai. they are doing Devi Devta's worship. Let's say nowadays, what do they want? But one, please give me promotion, give me hike in salary, give me some bonus. My business should do well. I must get a proper match for my son or for my daughter, for the marriage. My family growth should be, my family members should be very nice to me. They should give me a lot of respect. I should be famous. I should be popular. I, 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 I. I should get huge property. I should have a car. These are all very, very, very unintelligent prayer these people uh, make again and again, you know, it's temporary. In Vedic times, it was a different kind of a prayer. I want to go to heavenly planet, be there, enjoy there and come back. That's that's a different kind of a mindset. But now the mindset is very, very different in this modern times, you know. At least in Vedic times, they sought for happiness for a prolonged period of time. Here, happiness is short time, right? Prolonged period of time, they wanted happiness. But, but for us... <laughs> What are we doing? Very, very less intelligent we are. We are asking whatever is extremely temporary. Who knows when the job will be there, when we life will be there, the bonus is going to come or not. So Srila Prabhupada says, you know, whoever is promoted at the higher planetary system, they used to enjoy longer duration of time, you know, and a nice sense enjoyment, somarasa, everything they would have. But anyway, they, they can't stay there forever. So, if we can't understand that much, if we fail to understand that Krishna, who is the Sarva Karana Karanam, is the cause of all causes, we cannot understand. And we are confused that ultimate goal of life is what? Go to Golok Dham. But we don't understand. Then we keep coming back again and again and again. Sometimes you're going up, sometimes you're going down, sometimes animals, sometimes lower species. So, you know... See, instead of being um, elevated to that uh, spiritual world, eternal world, what is happening, you know, we are simply revolving in the cycle of birth and death. It's like, you know, football, like a football. We are being kicked all over by who? Maya Devi. Maya Devi is kicking us around. Why? We are, because we have forgotten God. So she's kicking us. Sometimes this side, sometimes that side, we are getting kicked. So... We are getting so many forms we take, sometimes animal forms. We don't know what all forms we are taking. But it's the only the human form. It's the only human form that offers the facility for God realization. No other form. Devi Devtas also they yearn to come back, you know, uh, to come back to this Madhya Loka so that they can go to higher realm. So isn't it better to go to spiritual world and uh, enjoy permanent happiness, right? Permanent bliss, permanent knowledge. Never come back over to this Dukkha Lam Ashashwatam, right? <laughs> that is as scriptures also say, you know, even Devi Devtas pray. They pray to be given birth as human beings because they can, they get a chance to rectify whatever previous mistake they may have done and they, they can go eternally to God and serve God, you know? Durlabham Manusham Janma Prarthayate Prida Shairapi is what... Um, Narad Muni had said, this uh, Manushya uh, life, Manushya Durlabham Manusham Rupa means this manu, Manush Rupa, Janma, is very Durlab, means very, very rare. Even the celestial gods or even the Devi Devatas, they, they do pr prarthana so that they can come and they can attain it and they can go back to eternally, back to Godhead, you know. So if they are also longing for that, so imagine. Um, why should we seek something very low, very temporary, right? We should think about it. Even Bhagavatam says, you know, that um, uh, 
uh, even the heavenly residents, they also enjoy and then they come back and after sometimes they, they are coming back, fall back into lower abode, then again going higher up, doesn't matter, right? We need to go to uh, Krishna Loka. So after describing this Prithik Tvena or uh, demigod worshippers or Devi Devata worshippers, now Lord Krishna, what does he want to do? He wants to show us what the Devi Devata worshippers have uh, attained. It's, it's nothing. Whatever they have attained is nothing as compared to his own devotees. That's what Lord Krishna wants to tell from the next shloka. And he also wants to tell us, you know what? How much I take care of my devotees, you don't know. Once you become my devotee, then you will understand. I personally take care of them. And Lord will discuss this, you know, uh, in the next look. But again, let's see the summary points of this one. So, okay, quickly. Results of demigod worship, that is Karmakanda, worshipping Krishna indirectly. They perform yajna to get swarga. When they get a lot of credits, they go to demigod planets. And then they enjoy a lot of pleasures. Ultimately, they come back to this world. So is that what we want? Is what we have to think. So let's see what Lord uh, says. Ananyash chintayan tomam yijana paryu pasate tesham nityabhi yuktanam yoga kshemam maham yam Yes, Rinda Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji. But those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. So, uh, <clears throat> Krishna has described about um, Devi Devta worshippers. First, he described how they pray, Trai Vidya. Then he said, what is the result of doing that? Then what happens to them, right? In the two shlokas, 2021, he told what happens. Now he is doing the comparing and contrasting of devotees between who are Devi Devta's worshippers, who are unalloyed devotees of Krishna. So he is comparing now. See, you think that you have done Devi Devta worshippers and you have gone there, right? Now see what my devotees are and how much I take care of them. So what he says, Krishna is here, Krishna is saying, Ye jana, those people. So now he is pointing. First he was ta talking about uh, Devi Devta worshippers, dev demigod worshippers. But now he is saying, those people, who are those people? My devotees. Ye jana, pariyu pasate, tesham nityabhi yuktanam. So, uh, Ananya, what are these people doing? Ananya, all these people, they worship me. Upasate, they pray. They worship me. How do they worship me? Always fixed in devotion. Nitya, Nityabhyukta naam. Nityabhyukta, Nitya means continuous. There is no stop. There is no stop at all. And not only continuous Nitya, also Ananya. They have no other aim. They have no other objective. They have nothing else to think about except Krishna. Ananyash chintayanto. Nitya. Nitya bhiyuktanam and ananya. These two are the main qualities of his devotees. They are Ananya means they have no other aim or objective other than Krishna. And nitya bhiyuktanam continuously have no other diversion. They are completely fixed in devotion. And what else do they do? Let's see. Chintan to man. They're always immersed in my chintan. They're always thinking about me. They're always meditating upon me. They're always concentrating, focused on me. Chintan to man. And ananya chintan to man. There is nothing else that they are thinking about except me. So my transcendental, me. So they are doing this. Okay. So if we ask this question, okay, Krishna, fine. So what do you do for them? So now Krishna is going to tell. I also do something. Okay, don't worry. So what's that? Yoga kshema vahamya. Yoga kshema. I protect them. Vaham aham. I carry whatever they don't have and require. You know, sometimes they don't have something and they require something. I carry that. So basically, I preserve whatever they are having. I will make sure I protect it. And make sure that they get what they require. <laughs> so he also do something something for the devotees who are ananyash chintentoma nityabhyuktana. So very, very touching and very, very important shloka for all the devotees, you know. It gives us a lot of enthusiasm after hearing such a shloka, you know. And 
when we understand what Krishna does for his devotees. So this uh, particular shloka, what happens is in this, uh, I can remember a past time. There was a, this person, you know, his name was um, Arjun Acharya. He was a very, very great scholar. He was a Brahmana also. And he was writing a commentary on Gita. So when he came to this verse, particularly 9.22, he saw this word, Vaham Aham. Vahami Aham. He said, Vahami means I personally carry. Was, how is it possible? How can Lord personally carry anything? What? So what he did, he said, no, no, no. I think this word is not right. So he struck Vahami and he wrote Karomi. Karomi means what? I get it done. So he said, okay, this seems better, you know. Uh, means Lord will get it done through somebody. He cannot personally, Vahami, he cannot come himself and do anything, right? So Karomi is better because he can get it done through somebody. He not, need not personally come like that, you know. So now this Arjuna Acharya was a very, very poor Brahmana. And in those days, poor Brahmana, they would go from door to door and, you know, do Madhukari, like they beg from door to door. And they used to sustain like that. And rest of the time, he was completely engaged. Nityabhiyuktanam and ananyash chintayantoman, Krishna's devotion. So uh, Arjuna Acharya, as usual, he went, one day he went for begging. So as soon as he went uh, for begging, two boys came home. Now they were carrying lots and lots of food and lots and lots of ingredients uh, other than the food also, the ready-made uh, food. So they came to this wife of uh, Arjuna Acharya. And they gave all the ingredients and they gave all the food stuff to her. And they were in a hurry. They wanted to leave that place. So she was like, what's the hurry? I mean, you have come to give me something. I want to talk to you. What's what's wrong? I mean, why are you running away? So uh, these boys were so beautiful looking and very charming. And, and, and they looked very disturbed. So she didn't understand. She said, can you just let me know why are you in such a hurry? Why, why do you want to leave this place so... So fast. So then one of the boys said, we are very, very fearful of your husband, you know, Arjuna Acharya. She said, okay, why? I don't understand. He's such a nice person. He has never hurt anybody. And he said, no, 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 no. You don't know your husband. He beats us. And you know, again, if he sees us, he will beat us again. And she said, how is that possible? So one boy who was little blackish in complexion, he turned around and he lifted his, you know, upper uh, cloth and he showed the, the the marks of all the beatings on his back. That was possible. He was completely disturbed. My husband, he could possibly do that? How come he has become so cruel? I didn't even know that. He has beaten these cute, beautiful, charming little boys. For what? Wait, uh, I once let him come. I'll confront him with this and I'm going to ask him this. So I'm going to find out what's wrong with him. And then they left and then she got the food and all ingredients. So she was busy cooking and he immediately thought, okay, I will eat today. Actually, you know, the, it was not a norm in Vedic times. The wife eating first, she would wait for her husband, serve her husband and then eat. But this time what she did, she started eating. At that moment, Arjuna Acharya entered the house and he saw his wife eating. He was a little puzzled because he had never seen that happening before. So he said, what are you doing? So uh, she said, what did you do? Can you please tell me? You're beating those cute little boys, black and blue. And what do you think you had done? What's wrong with you? He was completely puzzled, taken aback, shocked. He was thinking, what did I do? I, I don't think I did anything. What are you saying? He said, I know. And he said, by the way, where did this food come from? I'm, I have just come back. Then she started describing, you know what, those two boys came. One was in black in, in blackish in complexion. He showed me one was another one was fair skinned and they were carrying a lot of food and they gave me so much of food over here. And then they told me this, 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 you have done this, this, this. Then he, Arjun Achari closed his eyes. He meditated on the statement, whatever his wife said. And immediately, immediately he was overwhelmed out of ecstasy. He was like, oh my God, oh my God, you are so, so, so fortunate. Krishna and Balram had personally come and you got their darshan. Oh my God, how fortunate you are. And Arjuna Acharya also understood what had happened. 
So he went back to his commentary where he had written. He had written Wahami and he had, you know, the strike mark that was there before. He had, he had struck it, right? And he had wrote Karomi. So that strike mark was not there anymore. <laughs> that strike mark was there on the body of Krishna. <laughs> so here, basically, Krishna proved, I personally carry what my devotees want. It's not that I get it done through somebody, no Karomi, not some through somebody else. So the pastime makes it very clear, right? That when it comes to devotees of the Lord, the pure devotees, of course, the Ananya Bhaktas, the unalloyed devotees, who have no other de desire than to worship him, they want to serve only and only Lord. Then Krishna personally takes care of them. This is just one pastime, right? There are so many of them, we don't even know half of it. So now we know that Krishna, yes, he just definitely uh, takes care of his um, uh, devotees. Yeah? He will take the beatings instead of his devotees. That's what he does. And devotees escape <laughs> of the, the, the beatings. And he reciprocates. Krishna reciprocates to his devotees to the best, right? So, somebody who cannot even live for a moment without Krishna, how fish cannot live out of water? And he is thinking of Krishna 24-7. He's engaged in devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam and all that he's doing all the time, all the time. Surrendering completely to Krishna. Then naturally. Nityabhyuktanam. Then naturally, Lord, what will he do? Yoga Kshema Maha. He, is, uh, he will see the Kshema, merciful protection by the Lord. It's going to happen to such a devotee. So, you know how a mother, mother never thinks of leaving the child. Newborn child is born, helpless child. Will the mother leave it on the bed? Okay, forget about it. No. She knows that baby is entirely dependent on her, right? That supreme eternal mother of the soul is who? Krishna, God. So Lord is telling, he is giving like motherly kind of assurance over here. You surrender to me. Nityabhyuktanam and ananya shintentum. I will see your yoga kshema. Vahami aham. I will personally carry the burden. I will maintain you. I will make sure how a married person takes care of his own family, right? He is promising two things here. Yoga, you know, he's, uh, he's going to bestow his devotees that spiritual asset that we he does not possess. He will give that. He will only give us. And the second is Kshema. He will protect us. What else do we want? Condition is always placed by Krishna. <laughs> always exclusive surrender. We cannot have any, any, any inch, not inch, even this much of a doubt, you know. So it can be understood with the analogy like we said about mother and a child. Newborn, fully dependent on mother. She takes care of her his welfare. Baby will cry. And whenever it needs something, mother will understand. Mother will clean, feed, everything it will, she will do. Then a baby goes like five years old or something. He does some actions for himself. He can do it. Mother doesn't have to do you know so much. So the responsibility reduces. And then when the same child becomes a youth, teenager or youth, he can take up more responsibilities. Mother relinquishes those responsibilities slowly. Then uh, father is like, for example, coming, hey, where is the so-and-so, like our son? So mother will say, okay, he's gone out with his friends, I think. Maybe he's gone to a movie or some place. I don't know. And the attitude is very neutral towards that son. You know, same boy when he was a five-year-old, and he did not come uh, and he was delayed by five minutes. Mother, father would be running around. Where did he go? What happened to him? Hope sir, nothing bad happened to him. Hope he has not met with an accident. Same boy when he is grown up. Say, okay, he's gone out with his friends. He'll come back. He's, they, as they, the boy is growing up, they're relinquishing their responsibilities, father and mother. God's law is exactly the same. When we act from our independent will, I can do it. I'm self-sufficient. I am the doer of all my actions. God says, okay, fine, good. I'll note down your karmas and I will give you the result, which is fine. You are able to do yourself, very good. And then when we surrender partially, no, 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 I can't do it. God, please, 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 please help me. Partially he will help us. But the moment we are ananya shintayonto maam and nityabhi yukta now, then, and we say maame kam sharanam braja, like Lord says, and we offer ourselves exclusive to him. 
Maam Ekam Sharanam Raja, as Lord says, complete surrender, he will also take Yoga Kshemam Vahami Aham. He does that. So after this is very, very, very important word. So I, I focus more on this. After speaking this, Lord Krishna is going to talk about again that uh, Devi Devta's worshippers, they're actually worshipping him. He's again going back to them and saying, you know what? The Devi Devta's worshippers we were talking about late previous shlokas, they're actually worshipping me. Obviously, they're not worshipping me directly, but they are doing some indirectly. So let's see that one. Ye panya devata bhaktaha, ye jante shraddha yanvitaha, te pima ameva kaunteya, ye jante vidhi purvakam. Yes, please. Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, yes. Those who are devotees of other gods and who worship them with faith actually worship only me, O son of Kunti, but they do so in a wrong way. Hare Krishna. Yes. Avidhi Purvakam. Hare Krishna. So, Lord spoke about the in Ananyash Chintayantamam, unalloyed devotees, right? He said, I will vahami aham, yoga kshemam vahami aham. I will protect, I will preserve everything I will do. Now he's again coming back to demigod worshippers and he's saying, see, they are always hankering for this swargalokam, mishanti, I want to go to swargaloka and all that. They're hankering after that. So they're, what are they doing? He's coming back to that point. He's saying these uh, demigod worshippers, how these, um, uh, they're actually worshipping me only, but in a wrong way. So let's see what Lord Krishna is trying to say. He's talking about Devi Devta's worshippers. That much is clear, right? So, Api, Anya Devata Bhakta, Anya Devata, those who are Bhaktas of Anya Devatas, other people, other devotees, other uh, Devatas, sorry. So, those people who are worshipping other Devatas, Jadante, Shraddhayan, Anvitaha, they are worshipping. They are, it's not that they are not their atheist or anything. No, full Shraddha. With lot of Shraddha, they are doing it. It's not they're not doing with faith. They are having a lot of faith in that uh, demigods. Api Maam Eva Yajanti means they're actually worshipping only Api Maam, me only. They are actually worshipping me, O Kunti. Ah, o son of Kunti, you don't know. Api Maam only, me only they are worshipping. But what is the problem here? The problem here is Avidhi Purvakam. Vidhi means the proper way of doing. Avidhi means improper way. So they are doing it improper way or in a wrong way. So very, very nice shloka over here where Krishna is nicely telling us, you know, you know what he is expecting from us. Bhagavad Gita is actually a life manual for humanity at large, completely. It's not a book for like only Hindus, you know. It's, it's not a book for some particular set of people in the country. It's a, it's a life manual for everyone. Universe, we, we must say, right? So here, Supreme Personality of Godhead, what is he telling all of us? What is right? What is wrong? This is what Lord Krishna is telling in this shloka over here, 9.23. Avidhi Purvakam is a very, very important point. He's directing us towards the right path. You see, what are you people doing? You know, we have such a short lifespan. In this short lifespan, you are focusing on something different. Indirectly, you're trying to worship me. It's not right. You'll come back over here. So he's making a very, very strong point in this one. Telling those who are worshipping Devi Devtas, even with faith, they are worshipping him only indirectly, but avidhi purvakam. So we have understood, right? Vidhi means according to the rules and regulations of the Vedas. Avidhi means you are following rules, not following rules according to the Vedic injunctions. That's avidhi purvakam. So, Srila Prabhupada, what does he uh, make us understand in his purport? After reading his purport, we understand that. Whoever is engaged in uh, Devi Devta worshippers, they are completely not intelligent. They are unintelligent because Lord Krishna says they are worshipping me only indirectly. Krishna says, for example, you know, when a um, man is pouring water on the leaves and branches of a tree, he is not pouring water on the root. What is going to happen? <laughs> the leaves are, you keep pouring water on the leaves. Okay, sometimes it may survive for a while, but after a while, it will just wither. That's it. So they are not having enough knowledge. Same way, rendering service to different parts of the body is not going to help. If I say, no, my hand is really very helpful to me. I'm going to feed my hand only. It's not going to work. So how do we make sure that our hands and legs, everything is energetic? By supplying food to the mouth, to the stomach. Now, hand cannot go on strike and say, oh, why are you giving... Uh, stomach the food when I am the one who is uh, holding the pen or who is holding the sword. No. 
Similarly, who are demigods? They are, so to speak, uh, part and parcel, different officers and administrative uh, uh, people in uh, uh, Krishna's uh, uh, government. So we one has to follow the laws made by the government, right? Not by the officer. Officer is not making the law. Law is made by the government or the director, whoever, right? The main person. Similarly, everyone has to offer worship to the Supreme Lord. Mm -hmm. Then only automatically what happens? We are actually satisfying all the officers and directors as well because they are very happy. So the directors, officers, of uh, they are engaged as representatives of the government. And it's I like, you know, you're offering some bribe to the officers and that's illegal. We cannot mm -hmm. offer bribe to the, to the officers. That is what is called avidhi purvakam. You are offering bribe. That's avidhi purvakam. In, a, in other words, what Lord Krishna is trying to tell us, he's not approving. He says, I'm, I'm not approving of what you're doing actually. So when we water the root of a tree, everything gets uh, watered. Everything is nourished. Same way if you put food into the mouth, the whole body, life, air, everything gets uh, nourished automatically. Same way if we worship Lord Krishna, all his officers, Devi, Devtas, everybody is worshipped only because they are his hand, mouth, legs, everything. They are his. So, if, But if we start watering the leaves only and neglect the roots, it will perish. So he says, okay, you worship demigods. For a certain while, you will go to celestial planets. Ultimately, you have to come back. You won't get any spiritual benefits. So this is more elaborated in the next verse. So after saying all this, uh, in the next uh, shloka, what Lord is trying to say is, he is the only individual. He is the master of everything. So let's see the result of demigod worship before that quickly. So it's avidhi purvakam. It means we are less intelligent. But we are doing his worship only, Lord's worship, but indirectly. Three analogies are pouring water on the leaves and branches and not on the roots, feeding different parts of the body and not the stomach, and not to follow the laws of the government and offering bribe to the officers. What is the result of such things? We will down, come back to the cycle of life and okay i am the only enjoyer and master of all sacrifices therefore those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature fall down Simple as that. Hare <laughs> he spoke Hare Krishna. So he spoke about Devi Devta worshippers. He said, whoever, whoever is doing Devi Devta worshippers, they are actually worshipping me, but in a wrong way. Avidhi Purvakam. So now what Lord Krishna is talking about? His own position. Understand my position. He is telling them. What will happen to such uh, worshippers? So Lord says, Aham Prabhu. Aham Prabhu. I am the Lord. Of what? Sarva Yajnanam. Of all the yajnas, of all the sacrifices. Cha, and bhokta also. I'm the bhokta, I'm the enjoyer. Bhokta means enjoyer. And natumam abhijananti. You don't know those who do not know me. Abhijananti. Know what? Tatvena, tatva. Tatva means my nature. In, in real, in truth, if you do not know my tatva, atha, therefore what will happen to them? <laughs> means what? They will fall down. Again and again, Krishna is making an important statement. Aham Prabhu, he says, Aham Sarva, uh, uh, you know, Yajnana. I am the Bhokta. I am everything. What are you doing? If you keep going towards Devi Devtas, you will fall down. Very clearly it is stated over there. Many times of uh, Yajna performance, right? It is recommended in Vedic um, scriptures and so many pundits also tell us do this sacrifice, ye ho jayega, wo ho jayega. everything. Actually, you know, we do yajnas to satisfy Lord Vishnu, right? Yajna means Lord Vishnu. Lord, Lord Krishna, he is not trying to ex explain to us the drawback. What is the drawback of worshipping the, the heavenly uh, Devi Devatas? You know, we get power, of course, we do, we get some ability, we get some material benefits, we may get some favor. But we cannot get out of this cycle of death. That's what Lord Krishna is trying to explain to us. He's again and again and again telling that if you go to heavenly planets, you are still not liberated, my child. You are still in this samsara only. How 
he's just trying to release us from here come back to me so on the other hand if we un understand everything and we surrender ourselves to god that <laughs> devotion reaches the stage of perfection like ananyash chintayan toma men nitya nitya abhyukta nam that stage if we go nothing like it right that's what lord krishna is telling us and he says in this verse beware beware if you worship devi devatas you will fall down you will come uh, come down but come back to me come to me many times uh, people say okay you can worship anyone it's fine that's okay all paths lead to the same destination so now we have understood it's avidhi purvaka lord krishna has stated very very clearly in bhagavad gita and krishna is going to prove this statement wrong in the next shloka as well let's see that what is he saying yanti deva vrata devan pitrin yanti pitra vrata bhutani yanti bhutejya yanti madhya jino mam yes please who will uh, like snigdha mata ji would you like to read Hare Krishna. Uh, those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So like we see, many times people have this opinion, right? You can worship anybody and anything. Doesn't matter. All paths lead to the same destination. What is Lord Krishna telling here? He is going to say something else over here. What is he saying? Yanti Deva Vrata Devan. Those who worship Devi Devatas, they will go to Devi Devatas or demigod planets. Pitra Yanti Pitra Vrataha. Pitra, Pitra, Pitra is your ancestors. Whoever is worshipping ancestors, they will go to live with them. Bhutani Yanti, Bhuteja. So whoever is doing Bhutas and Pretas, worshippers, they will go and live with ghosts and spirits only. Right? So but last statement is very, very important. Yanti Madhya Jinopimam. Yanti Madhya Jinopimam means, but my devotees, my devotees, Apimam, they will come and live with me. So this shloka makes it very, very, very clear that if we choose different path, we will go to different destination. 9.25 states that. It's not going to be the same. Devotees can be elevated to the level to whoever they are worshipping to. Like, you know, how the water in a pipe can only rise to the level of the reservoir to which it is connected. It can only rise to that. It cannot go beyond that. Right? So same way, Lord Krishna is explaining. If you worship to Devi Devta, you will go to only that level. If you worship ghosts and you can go only go to that level. If you worship your ancestors, you can only go to that level. If you worship me, you will come back to me. So he's giving that level. Giving, giving that scale also. He is giving us that knowledge. So that we can conclude and we can reach the highest level and go back to him. So Indra Dev, for example, Kuber Devta, then we have Agni Devta. We can go to them. No issues at all, but only till that level. And then our good karma is finished. They'll say, okay, sorry. Very nice to have you over here. Please go back. Bye-bye. And that's it. They are, we are sent back from him. Pitras, ancestors, very good to have, very good thoughts about them. We should be grateful to them. We should always be grateful to our ancestors. But it should not be undue concern for them is also very detrimental for us. Because, you know, if we go and start engaging in that kind of worshipping, then we go to their abode and stay there. And then again, they have to come back. And of course, whoever is so ignorant, not unintelligent, they start worshipping ghosts and spirits. And they are thinking that, okay, I'm a tantric, I can do all this. Lord Krishna says, whoever is indulging in that, they will take birth in those. Uh, uh, in next life, they take birth in go among ghosts and spirits only. So he's not, uh, and the highest devotees, Lord Krishna says, Yanti Madhya Jinopi Mam. Whoever is uh, attached his mind to me, they are the best. Vrata, Pitra Vrata. Vrata means resolve. Whatever you resolve, you will go there. So you have to firmly resolve to worship Lord Krishna so that we can go to his uh, abode, right? So after speaking about all the Prithik Tvenas, demigod worshippers, and um, now what Lord Krishna is going to talk about in the next set of uh, shlokas, you know, from 26 to 34. Uh, he's exactly very, very important set of verses. These are, you know, from 26 to 34 in this entire Bhagavad Gita. This set of verse, uh, verses we have seen that Krishna is going to 
give very, very, very important details about how we can become a pure devotee. I want to become a pure devotee, but how to become? That's what Lord Krishna is going to tell. How to practice devotional service. And, and, and once we can understand that how we can do devotional service, how we can you know, become a pure devotee, and if we can understand, if we can imbibe, if we can practice whatever these verses is trying to tell us in our day-to-day -day life, guaranteed. It's guaranteed by Krishna that we will become pure devotees. How to become? That Lord will tell us. And if we do that, he says, you can come home back to God and we can go back to him, he says. <laughs> so that's the um, glories of directly worshipping Krishna is from 26 to 34. That is what Lord Krishna is going to tell. Patram pushpam palam toyam yume bhaktya prayachati tadam bhakta yupurtam ashnami prayatatmana. Yes, please. Rinda Mataji, would you like to go ahead? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. If, if one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, a fruit or water, I will accept it. Hare Krishna Mataji. So Lord Krishna till now has spoke about different different types of upasanas, you know, ahamgra upasana, somebody who's worshipping him as his own self. Then he spoke about whoever is worshipping Devi Devtas, you know, Pratika upasana. Then he spoke about Vishwarupa upasana, who is worshipping the universal form of the Lord. All this he said. And then he also spoke about uh, which path to go for and how we are worshipping Devi Devatas. What is the result of worshipping Devi Devatas? How he takes care of his own devotees. How we should make right decisions, right choices. Now Lord Krishna is going to speak about last few verses of this chapter. Very important verses. He's kind of, there is a plea, there is an appeal in these verses by Krishna. He's kind of begging here. Do devo pure devotional service, my child. Please do it and become my one-pointed devotee. We can feel that uh, that that plead from his, that appeal. And of course, once we understand, it will make a lot of difference in our lives. So here he's saying, you know, yo, yo me, whoever, yo me, whoever, bhaktiya prayachati, bhakti upaharitam. Lord says, whoever, whoever offers with bhakti, bhaktiya, bhaktiya bhakti, Whoever offers with bhakti, with devotion, what? Lord says, in bhakti upurutam. What is the condition? Prayatat atmana. Atmana, with pure consciousness. My prayat atmana means pure consciousness. What is Lord talking about? That must be, you know, you must have pure, you must be pure, you must offer in devotion. What Lord is talking about? What we need to offer? Patram, leaf, phalam, uh, pushpam, flower. Thalam, uh, this um, fruit, toyam, water. So here Lord is saying, anyone, anyone who offers him with uh, these patram, pushpam, phalam and toyam, with love and devotion, what will he do? Tat aham ashnami. Tat aham bhakti upartam ashnami prayatatmana. Ashnami, I will accept. Ashnami, aham, I will take it. So he's speaking how simple the process of uh, bhakti is. This is what Lord Krishna is telling from here onwards. Think anyone, anyone and everyone in this entire creation can do it. It's, it's easy to practice bhakti. Doesn't matter. Person is poor, rich, a woman, uh, they are women or they are men or gender, age, nothing matters. Nothing matters here in this shloka. He says he has used bhakti. There's the word he has used twice in this uh, shloka. Very, very important shloka. He has uh, told the benefits of worshipping the Supreme. He's explaining how easy it is to do. You, you know, I will tell you how it is easy. You just have to do nothing. So, see, if you're doing a worship of Devi Devtas, you have to do so much, right? A uh, lot of rituals to do. Follow, you know, all the rules and regulations properly. You have to do some fasting till so-and-so time. And then Pandit will say all the mantras should be pure. All the things, you have to buy so many things. And here, Lord says, I'm telling you, it's so easy for me to do, to, to do devotional service to me. I will accept anything. Condition, loving heart. If you have only fruit, okay, fine, I'll take it. If no fruit is available, no problem. Flower. Flower is not, it's not season, no problem. Leaf, it's not there, never mind. Water, it's available everywhere. Just give me with loving heart, that's it. 
So bhaktiya, bhaktiya is so, so important. Lord is looking for only and only loving devotion. So Lord Krishna has made such an important uh, and wonderful statement over here. He is so merciful. We can see how merciful he is. Why would he even tell? He can say, oh, find your own way. Come back to me and with great difficulty. But no, he is giving us. He, is, he, he values us. He knows. He wants us there. But he says, love me. Love me. I don't want anything else but love from you. I don't think I want anything. He says, Tulsi dala matre na jalasya chuleke na cha. Vikrinite swam atmanaha bhakte bhyo bhakta vatsalaha. Bhakta vatsalaha. So if you offer just with love, sincere love, just tulsi leaf also, or maybe a little bit of water, doesn't matter. You can just hold a little bit of water in your palm. That's it. He says, he will offer himself to you in return because he is completely bowled over by our love, bowled over by our devotion that way. That's why he's used the word prayatatmana. I accept offerings, whatever, when your heart is pure. Bhagavatam also has the same verse, you know, same verse as this, uh, as in Bhagavad Gita. You know, when he was eating that dry rice at the house of his uh, friend uh, Sudama, Sudama, when he had come, he was eating dry rice, right? Lord Krishna had said the same verse. Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome Bhaktya Prayachiti Tadam Bhakta Yukurtam Ashnami Prayatatmana. He said the same thing in Bhagavatam when he went to Sudama's place to eat, uh, when he was eating the dry rice which Sudama offered. Same thing he had told at that time also. Whenever God comes on, on, onto this earth, what does he do? He he does his pastime, right? And uh, before Mahabharata war, what had happened? He went for that negotiation to Hastinapur. He wanted to understand if there will be some agreement between Kauravas and Pandavas. Right. That time Duryodhan came and he said, Oh, come, I have chappan bhog, 56 ways of uh, types of food to offer you. Come to my palace. Lord rejected that. Lord Krishna instead went to uh, Vidur, Vidur's uh, place and Vidurani, Sulabha. He went to her place, you know. And she was longing for an opportunity to serve him. And he came over there. She was so overjoyed at seeing him. She, all she had was bananas. He came unexpectedly. So she, did, she didn't have much with her. So she offered bananas to him. But, you know, her intellect, it was completely, it became numb with so much of love. She was not thinking straight. <laughs> she didn't even realize that, you know, she was dropping the food, fruit down and she's putting the banana peels into Lord's mouth. <laughs> but Lord saw the devotion. Lord saw the love. Lord saw the purity of heart. Nicely, blissfully, he was eating the peels. You know, as if it was the most delicious food in the world. Satatam kirta yento maam yatantascha dhrida vrata, right? That was what One pointed devotion is what they are looking for. You know? So, this is this is what uh, Lord Krishna is going to talk about. Uh, you know? The Lord spoke about uh, one pointed devotional service. But looking at Arjuna, he started thinking. No, I think he may not be eligible as of now to do that one-pointed devotional service. So what now Lord Krishna is going to do? He is going to reduce a level a little bit down. And he's going to talk something in between, um, uh, let's say, what is that called? Uh, Nishkam Karma. Nishkam Karma Yoga and pure devotional service. There has to be some in between sandwich kin thing. So he says, okay, maybe Arjuna is still not in that level. Let me come down a little bit. And then he's going to talk about something in between. So we will see that um, uh, tomorrow, in the tomorrow's. So I'll, I'll stop over here. And.